3.3 example two gets us to factor using that integral zero theorem. And that integral zero theorem tells us that the candidates for determining factors of this polynomial are factors of the constant. So my constant is three, I'm gonna check those factors. And it turns out that it's not as bad as some of them because it is one and three. Those are the only factors of three. Now that does mean though, that we have to check a few. We're gonna check if X plus one is a factor um, and we do that by evaluating, I'm gonna make sure we make that, let me define that. So I'm gonna say that P of X is equal to what they've given us, two X cubed minus five X squared minus four X plus three. So I am going to check to see if X plus one is a factor. I'm gonna check the polynomial evaluated at negative one. That's gonna be two times negative one cubed minus five times negative one squared minus four times negative one plus three. That's equal to negative two minus five plus four plus three, which is negative seven plus seven, which is zero. Now, I did not intend to get it right on the first time, but it, it definitely can happen. I'd like to show you that they don't always work. Uh, we know that one's gonna work. We're gonna do some long division in a second, but what if I wanted to check if X minus one was a factor? If I wanted to know if X minus one is a factor, I would check the polynomial evaluated at one, which would be two times one cubed minus five times one squared minus four times one plus three which means that the polynomial evaluated at one is going to be two minus five minus four plus three. That's negative three minus one. I get negative four. Now, because that's not zero, X minus one is not a factor. So we don't have to worry about that. Now, certainly if you find a factor right away, don't try to prove that other factors aren't factors. There's no point of doing that, but I wanna make sure you see a, a little bit that, you know, you're not always gonna get on the first try, especially with a larger constant. You know, positive three is quite small, but as that constant gets larger, you may have to check multiple factors. Um, and certainly using your calculator for that is a big help. And I'm gonna do that in the next example. All right, so we know P of X is equal to two X cubed. That was given to us in the question. And we know that X plus one is a factor. What we need to determine then is we know that P of X can be written as the quotient of the division when I would divide by X plus one. And I wanna write this because it's important to see this manipulation is just like any division we've ever done. To find Q of X then, I'm gonna take my polynomial and divide it by X plus one. Now I am going to do long division here. You could certainly do synthetic division, but I do like to push long division at least initially until we get more and more comfortable with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my polynomial in descending order of degree, which is how it's written. So there's no real change here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide it by X plus one. And the result of this division, I'll just put up here is going to be Q of X. And assuming we've done this correctly, you know, fingers crossed, we should also get a remainder of zero because we have just finished saying that X plus one is a factor, right? Which means there should be no remainder. All right, to do this long division, remember it's leading term divided by leading term. So two X cubed divided by X is two X squared. I multiply that back on, I get two X cubed plus two X squared and I subtract. The first term cancels as it should. Negative five X squared minus two X squared is negative seven X squared and the negative four X and positive three are still there. All right, next up then is to divide negative seven X squared by X. I get negative seven X. When I multiply it back onto the divisor, I get negative seven X squared minus seven X. And I subtract that. The first term cancels, negative four X minus negative seven X is positive three X. The positive three is still there. Three X divided by X is positive three. I multiply that back on. And when I do the subtraction, I get my zero. Now, what I can say now is the polynomial, and, and I'm not gonna write the polynomial this many times, so I'm just gonna write P of X is equal to, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this division statement right here, because now we know what Q of X is. Q of X is two X squared minus seven X plus three, and we used X plus one as a means to end to get there. Now, before you get too excited, and I mean, maybe you're not excited at all, but the fact that we had a cubic and now we have a quadratic times a binomial means worst case scenario to find the x-intercepts, we could use the quadratic formula on that two x squared minus seven x plus three. But before you jump to the quad formula, you should check if it's factorable. So I'm just gonna write kind of on the right-hand side here, is two x squared my seven, minus seven x, sorry, plus three factorable. We could do our little t-chart. We would be looking for two numbers that add to give us negative seven, but multiply to give us two times positive three, which is positive six. 
And in this particular case, that's negative one and negative six. I'll use decomposition here. So I'm gonna write this as two X squared minus six X minus one X plus three. I can take a two X out of the first pair, which leaves me with X minus three. I can take a negative one out of the back pair, which leaves me with negative one times X minus three. And then fully factored, we'd have X minus three times two X minus one. This expression replaces the quadratic. So therefore P of X is equal to X minus three times two X minus one times X plus, oh, messed up there. Um, this should be the X plus one that was already there. All right, the point of this, and it answers, you know, let me scroll up really quickly here. Part B says, describe how to use the factors of the polynomial to determine the zeros of the polynomial function. And I'd like to say that P of X is equal to zero if, and really I'm gonna put if and only if, x minus three is equal to zero, or two x minus one is equal to zero, or x plus one is equal to zero. And this is something that we've exploited since grade 11. Once you factor a quadratic, if a value of x makes one of your factors zero, it makes the entire quadratic zero. We're just extending that to an upper degree. And so now if one of the factors of our cubics is zero, then the entire cubic is zero. So what we get is we get three values. We get that x is equal to three, x is equal to one half, just moving the one, then dividing by the two, and then x is equal to negative one. And these three values are the x-intercepts of p of x. Or they're also the values of x that make function p equal to zero, which is often what we're looking to solve um, in some of those complex situations. All right, uh, the next one will be a uh, quartic, and I'm definitely going to show you how to kind of use your calculator to make life just a little bit easier on yourself.